Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Research 101. And today, we're going to be talking about some tips I have learned by being a PSC supervisor to help those of you who are research students. So hopefully you will find this useful. So I thought to do how did I become a PC supervisor after my PhD, the pros and cons in a separate video because today I just wanted just to share some really useful tips that I've come across in my time as being a supervisor to help you at this moment in time because as you know I am all about sharing tips and advice for the research life. So why not delay anymore? Let's get straight in. So number one is a phrase or statement I heard and I learned from a video by Ali Abdul. Now he got it from a book, I'll find the source, I'll put it down in the description box. But it was about asking for forgiveness than asking for permission. And what that kind of meant is to try things out before asking for permission because sometimes you learn quicker, you learn faster. And when you're delaying and waiting for permission sometimes, it can hinder your progress. Now when I was thinking about that a few weeks ago, I thought... That actually applies to research and applies to the early parts of a research student, whether you're doing a master's or PhD, whereby you're constantly obviously asking for permission to do this, to do that. I think now being a supervisor, I looked at it and I said, there are times where just give it a go yourself. You know, I've told my PhD students, give it a go yourself. Give it a shot. No worries. You've got a protocol that you've found. We don't need to go around the houses at this moment in time to optimise it yet. Give it a shot and see what happens. That way you accelerate your progress. You become a bit more independent. You gain more competence by doing something on your own. You then learn what went right or wrong by trying it out. Another famous phrase, you know, you learn to run before you can walk. And in key parts of a research degree kind of progression, as a research student, there are times where you don't need to meticulously identify everything. Especially if it's something new, just give it a shot first and then you can work backwards and figure out how to optimize it sometimes that's a far more effective and efficient way of learning and developing so that notion of giving things a go without having to spend too much time optimizing it then see what went right or wrong and use that as a foundation then to optimize whatever experiment or whatever kind of analysis or whatever type of optimization for your qualitative research whatever it may be also think about that there are times to be really organised and meticulous, but I also, from my experience now, see there are elements where you need to begin to give it a shot and see what happens. Now, number two, in the spirit of being a productive grease monkey, as Ali Abdul also says, and something I'm trying to learn to be more efficient and effective, is having a communal digital space where all parties in the team, whether you're a PhD student, you're the postdoc, you're the actual supervisors, can read and add key parts of information, whether it's protocols, papers, so you're minimizing the constant emails between yourselves. Now, you have a constant check on whether it's a cloud storage repository, whether it's Dropbox, OneDrive, Figshell, or you name it. There are so many different kind of places where you can deposit Google Drive as well, where you can have assigned folders and a cloud storage base where people have editing access. The supervisor can upload papers that they found or protocols that are worth sharing. And the PC student can upload progress on reports, protocols, you know, methods, you name it. They can put it up there as well. Now, the reason why I mentioned it as a really useful tip is that sometimes it's not utilised to its maximum potential. Because when you minimise those few emails every so often, they do total up to a lot of time from both sides. A lot of supervisors don't have the time to drop everything every day when a PC student has a query. So it's easier to just deposit something that they find or for the PhD student to deposit something that they find and every so often, so, you know, designated time in the week, they can go and check on what's new, share some comments without the constant maybe emails that may not be needed. There are times where emails are needed 100%. But I do think that this is a useful strategy for those irrespective of what type of research you do, qualitative, quantitative, lab-based, field-based. Having a digital communal space makes it far more effective for both parties to share, curate, edit, give feedback on any different type of information related to your research. Now, number three is something I wish I did when I was a PhD student, and it's the notion of quick versus long-term documentation. And what I mean by this is that whenever you have a meeting or you're learning something new, you want to quickly document what's happened so you don't lose the thought processes, the useful thinking or the useful vocabularies that you talked about, you don't want to lose that. 
But then you want a long term kind of documentation where it's nice and organized, you can find it in a year's time, and that's sometimes very different to quick documentation. Now, the reason why I've separated these two is that sometimes a person can be, you know, deterred away from making noting things down because they don't have a quick way of doing it, so they get put off with the long term documentation. However, other people do note things down quick, so whether they record it, they take a photo, they just jot it down. But then they forget the long-term documentation where they want to find some calculation or some uh, paper. But because they didn't preserve it or document it in the long-term format, they lose it. They're like, oh, they're trying to find a, a piece of paper in the bottom of the bag. I did this in my PhD, unfortunately. And you spend hours, sometimes even days, trying to find something that should have been in your long-term documentation area. So here are a few ways you can tackle this. If you're having a meeting, just let your supervisor know in advance that you're going to be making notes and make notes. They're not going to be, you know, disheartened by you spending a few extra seconds asking them to repeat what they've said. So you've got that quick documentation or note it down or take a photo or record that bit if you want to. There are different ways you can have that quick documentation or video record it. So if somebody's showing something, video record it. That's your quick documentation. Then you can transcribe it, take pictures of it, splice it all out in your long-term documentation. Now with long-term documentation, it is entirely up to you. I'm a bigger fan of digital workbooks because you can preserve it, you can add different things, you can access it anywhere, you can't lose it as well. And it's easier then to share it to other people, to the undergraduate students and master students that are coming on board. So whether that's you know OneNote, whether that's Notion, which a lot of people are using now, from the productivity workspace, you know, people in photography and videography, people in research, you know, people who are all about a kind of research use Notion. And that's another example. Even your Apple Notes, if you wanted to. Right now, I'll be using Apple Notes a bit more. So you can try into using that as your long term documentation. But as long as you are looking at both, you're not just noting it down and then forgetting about it, or you can't be bothered or you can't be asked to document it and you just try and remember in your head and two days later you forget so keep in mind quick versus long-term documentation to house all of your research questions ideas thoughts side projects you know ways to structure your thesis all of those things you want to make sure that when you think of it jot it down and then after that you have a nice organized way to document your research so guys those were some interesting and useful tips i hope um, that i've learned by being a pc supervisor for the past kind of year and a half, I'll be going into sharing more kind of insights in my life as a PC supervisor now and things that I hope can benefit you the more I talk about, you know, experiences or things that I see research now as different to when I was a PhD student. So stay tuned to those um, videos. If you want to, please do subscribe to the channel and that will be super helpful for me. You can see it down over here um, so you don't miss out on these Research 101 videos. During the week as well, I'm trying to share kind of more tech and more kind of life-based videos as well to have something different for you to enjoy and also benefit from. And if you've got any questions, queries, comments in the comment section down below, you can find me on Instagram, amir.phd, or if you want to email me, as amir at researchtribe.org. In any case, I shall see you in the next one. Take care.